welcome to Behind the Science, where we ask challenging questions directly to the scientists who are trying to solve today's toughest problems. I'm your host, Jennifer Fournier. I have a lot of friends that are having babies or have had babies recently, and they're really worried about all the news reports on contamination of infant formula. It's so disturbing to think that what you're giving your infant could be compromised. This is just not something new parents should have to worry about. So in this episode of Behind the Science, let's take a look at the challenges of testing infant formula and learn a little more as to why this is so important. Let's do it for the children. First of all, Melissa, congratulations on your news. We are so excited about your baby girl. Oh, thank you guys so much. I'm so glad that we're sitting down having lunch today because um, I've been reading a lot about infant formula that's really troubling, so I wasn't sure if there was anything you could tell me. Oh, you know, I've been reading a lot about the regulatory testing requirements for our food supply. It is really concerning. I've been reading a lot, especially about veterinary drug residues. So take infant formula, for example. You know, that matrix has a lot of fats and proteins and phospholipids in it. Um, so when you're testing for a wide variety of compounds like veterinary drugs, you know, I just don't know how you do that quickly and efficiently when you have so many samples to process, so many different types of food. It seems a little, a little intimidating. A new mom shouldn't have to worry about that kind of stuff. No kidding, right? Oh. Hey, Kim. Hi, Kim. Hello, Hi, Kim. ladies. Uh, I overheard you guys talk about uh, infant, infant formula. formula. Mm -hmm. Yes. Recently, Michael and I, we working on uh, the infant, mo infant formula application. So would you like to come into the lab and... Oh, yeah, we'd love to. Thank you. That, that'd be sure. great. All right, let's go. Let's go. These are some of the typical compounds that we might be screening for when we're looking for different veterinary drug residue classes. These are the actual methods that Kim and Michael will be following. You can see that Kim's simple Oasis Prime HLB method only starts with 600 microliters of the extracted sample. She's simply gonna place the cartridge on the vacuum manifold and then pass her sample straight through and collect it at the end. She'll then take a, a small aliquot of that final sample and put that into the auto sampler vial and she's ready to go. Now Michael's dispersive method is a little more comp complex. He needs five mils of sample extracted from the infant formula. Then he's gonna take five mils of water and add that to the dispersive cartridge. Then he has to add five mils of extract to that. He has to vortex, he has to centrifuge. Then he has to take five mils of that final solution, transfer it to a new tube, vortex and centrifuge again. Then he takes an aliquot of that particular sample, dilutes it with the buffer, and then he's ready to go. Hi, Michael. Oh, hello there. How are you doing? Great, how are you? I'm fine. I'm running those, uh, that baby formula method we were talking about. Okay, great. So you're going to do the dispersive comparison, right? I'm going to do the dispersive analysis, yes. Okay, great. And then, Kim, you're going to do the work with the Oasis Prime HLB? Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Let's see it in action. So let's look at the recovery data for the two methods. You can see the Oasis Prime HLB method with the blue tracers had much higher recovery than Michael's dispersive method with the red tracers. You can also see that the reproducibility for the blue tracers were much, much more concise than the red. Now let's look at the cleanliness of the final eluates. Here we're looking at phospholipid removal. And you can see that for competitor E, if we take a look at phospholipids presence before, and after the method cleanup, you can see that even after the cleanup is, is completed, that we have quite a bit of phospholipids still remaining. But if we look at Oasis Prime HLB, you can see that phospholipids that are present before removal, but then after we've gone through the process, there's virtually nothing remaining, showing a much cleaner sample. Wow, it's a relief to know that there really is a quick and efficient way to test for these compounds. Yes, and it seems that Oasis Prime HLB really is a lot faster and easier than the dispersive method that I used. I knew it! 
I feel better. Do you feel better, Melissa? We feel so much better, Jen. If there are not simple and highly sensitive, robust methods in place for analysis of our food supply, we may be ending up with compounds in there that are not good for us. The worst is when it is something so critical and sensitive, such as baby formula, because even just a small amount can harm these little ones. Well, I hope that this series has convinced you that solid phase extraction, or SP, is a valuable tool for a wide variety of samples. Check out the links below for details on the method you saw today, as well as additional problems Oasis Prime can help to solve. And join us next time for another episode of Behind the Science.